oh, 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 won't you let me know, oh, 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 where to go, where to go. kind of precious metal that people all over the world yearn to have. King Midas, King Solomon, Musa in Africa, we have people in South America and right here in Cape Town we also had our own gold mine. So we're going to show you a little bit about that today. Also there was attempts in doing the silver, manganese, tin, and ask him, say, we'll take you and show you and share some stories. So I'm standing here at the Strand Street quarry, more towards Upper Strand Street, where most people would just be driving past, passing from the city all the way into the Seapoint area. Now, the battlements of the Cape Castle would have been built from the shale that was quarried out of this property behind me. Above us is another quarry where the wealthier people would have had their washing done. And so before the days of tumble dryers um, and automatic washing machines, washing was done at the top there. standing at the start of the lion's head walk everybody in Cape Town knows where that is now most people don't know that hundreds of years ago there was a gold mine a hundred meters below where I'm standing right now they dug a shaft which was the depth of about a six-story building to look for gold but it wasn't viable economically because Cape Town has folded mountains and the gold is normally in a line of stone so with the folded mountains you would have to actually mine up and down so it didn't really work now in 1951 a firefighter almost fell down the mine shaft so they covered the mine shaft over so if you want to go looking for it it is about a hundred meters down this hill Manganese was mined on the slope of this mountains in the early 1900s, about 750 meters up. To get the manganese down to the flat bottom boats, they built solid wooden structures with chutes coming down in a zigzag pattern so that it can eventually slow down and get into the boat. This boat would then take it out to the bigger boats out there. It is said, urban legend, that one day the guys needed to get to the drinking hole sooner than later. They then decided to put a whole shipment of manganese down and it hit the bottom of the boat with a bang, sinking it. Now manganese, if you didn't know, is used daily in glass. It's used to stiffen the tin cans that we always use. And of course, it is used in our cell phone batteries. We're standing today at the top of Silver Mine. Now, Silver Mine got its name obviously from a silver mine. The first silver mine that started in the Cape was over just below Table Mountain and close to Kirstenbosch Gardens was a place called Cecilia Forest. Now Simon van der Stel had someone mining silver there and one day he sent someone to check on the mine and apparently there was no silver there at all, the guy was a charlatan and Simon van der Stel then got angry and he sent the, the miner off to Indonesia. In those days People who had done something wrong in the company were banished off to Indonesia, which is actually quite ironic because at that time the Dutch were bringing slaves from Indonesia to South Africa. 
Simon van der Stel then got Müller, who was his um, chief miner, to come and look up here on the silver mine mountain range here and see if he could mine silver here. He did apparently find a bit of silver, nickel, copper in these mountains and he started mining here. Months later, after they had been drawing money from the company, Simon van der Stel was on his way to Simonstown, what would become Simonstown, and on Musenberg Beach, he found three of his miners. They were supposed to be at work. Well, they had to make up an excuse pretty quickly. So they said that they were looking for a runaway slave. And Simon van der Stel was a little bit skeptical about what they had told him. He sent somebody up to check on the mine here on the top of the mountain. What did they find? They found that the mine had in fact been salted. There was, uh, salted means that they had added metal to the, the metals that were there. And they had mixed copper, nickel and silver in with dirt so that it looked like it came from the mine. And the mine was abandoned. These guys were being paid a salary and they were doing absolutely nothing. They were on the beach. Well, I'm standing here on the pier at Cork Bay. Kalk Bay, also commonly known to the locals as Kalk Bay. Kalk is the Afrikaans word for lime. Now, Kalk Bay also once upon a time was very popular in having lime kilns. And this is where they took shells, burnt it down, and they used the lime, of course, together with seawater to lime wash the walls. The lime was used by farmers, spread through all the crops, and that would serve as a repellent against insects wanting to damage the crops, and that would save the farmer's crops from any unwanted guests. This is a lime kiln that was used in 1890. What people done was they would collect the seashells, they would feed it into this furnace, the powdery form, which would be the lime, or calc as we would say in Afrikaans, would be used as part of a building material. Note that back in the day there wasn't concrete. Concrete today cracks very easily, whereas lime, as part of the building material, didn't crack. It breathed, and that's why you have buildings that are old, that would last for years and years and years. This is an example of how lime wash was used. The lime, after going through the furnace, would be mixed with seawater. It would then be painted onto walls. This would also serve as killing the germs. Leaning against these walls was the pain in the butt because often what is left behind is the residue onto your clothes. An example of early white-collar crime was a miner who worked in Stellenbosch. The mountains that you see there in the background are the Stellenbosch mountains. One of those mountains is the Simonsburg mountain, which is just behind Hruet Drakenstein prison, the last prison where Nelson Mandela was incarcerated. What he did was he melted down Spanish coins and he salted the mine. He mixed them with dirt and he showed them to investors. And he said, hey guys, do you want to invest in my mine? There's a lot of money to be made here. He had mayors, he had ministers from churches investing in this mine. And he was talking absolute rubbish. He took their money and he ran away. There was never any silver and he had dug a little hole in the ground there was no mine so the first white collar crime in South Africa just behind me you can see Roman Rock Lighthouse now it's one of the only lighthouses in South Africa or Southern Africa that's built on top of a rock but obviously the rock wasn't a huge sturdy rock so they had to build extra rocks around it to make it more stable. And on the beach at Seaforth here, they cut rocks, granite rocks from here, and took it all the way out to sea and built a huge base around 
Roman rock lighthouse. And you can also see in the background over here, we've got lots of little penguins who have decided to take over this part of the beach as well. So we share the beach with penguins here at Seaforth. This is granite and we are very blessed in the Cape to have quite a bit of granite at our disposal. The very popular granite is obviously found in Paul. But the granite here on the beaches at Seaforth, you can see the sparkle in it. If you want to see granite in its form, the cemeteries are loaded with it. History also takes us back a few hundred years where masons, specifically Argentinian masons, were brought in to work, mold and sculpt these materials and put up as pillars. Very popular ones are found at the Rhodes Memorial. Now what's very interesting is we wonder where do diamonds come from? Why are they so important to ladies? No, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Now, we all wear diamonds on our wedding rings these days or engagement rings. In the old days, the rings were flatter. They didn't contain so many diamonds. It was in the early 1900s that Anglo-American did such a wonderful ad campaign that they made diamonds into a girl's best friend, the thing that you have to have. Now, ladies, this is your diamond. This is where your diamond comes from. Under huge pressure, this may well turn into, ouch, a diamond one day. So I'm going to sit here quietly and finish off my four carats. Ciao. Oh.